Father, I urge you to reconsider your marriage. It's evident that your wife is only interested in your money. You paid off all her debts, which was a considerable sum, but she continues to exploit you for more. Did she put a spell on you? Can't you see that she's using you as a bottomless wallet? Furthermore, I witnessed her sitting on our driver's lap with her hand down his pants, yet you fired him on her say-so. Please think before she leads you to your grave. If you weren't my father, I wouldn't have attended this wedding, said the son, who was still fit and wearing an expensive three-piece suit, to his gray-haired but vigorous father. They sat in the gazebo in the backyard, smoking Havana cigars, discussing the issue at hand, perhaps for the last time. You're mistaken, Victor. Lena isn't like that. I haven't felt so deeply for any woman since your mother, of course. Why are you tarnishing her reputation? The father responded, growing angry. Is her reputation truly that impeccable? Can't we put any blemish on it? I researched her past and discovered so many men that even a hundred women would envy, Victor countered. Stop it, I don't want to hear any more, leave and don't show me your sour face on my wedding day. I know what an honest man looks like, the father retorted. Very well, Papa, I'll leave, the son said, rising to his feet. Despite his reluctance, Victor felt compelled to prove that Link was not worth anything. As he rose to his feet, his hands shook slightly, and he left the yard where he had once enjoyed his happiest days until his stepmother arrived. Meanwhile, the groom let out a heavy sigh as he watched his troublesome son depart and made his way towards the mansion that he had built with his own two hands, now towering above the small hut it once was. The wedding reception was in full swing at a fancy country restaurant, with the newly bride laughing and enjoying herself at the table. However, the groom was nowhere to be found. Peter, the 70-year-old father of the groom, had gone to the men's room, but had not yet returned. Frustrated, the bride thought to herself, that he must be suffering from diarrhea or hemorrhoids, and she wished he would just hurry up and leave for good. Despite being over 50 on her wedding day, Angelina's face still radiated a perfect, happy smile. With her professional skills and stunning beauty, she could give anyone a head start in the industry. This was her third wedding, and she didn't hesitate to wear a white wedding dress. Like any bride, she was excited and felt like a young girl trying on a wedding ring for the first time. Angelina's mother, a famous fashion model in Soviet times, passed down her beauty to her daughter. Angelina had no trouble finding a suitable partner to bring into the world even more beautiful children, including a couple of sons. However, Angelina decided not to follow in her mother's footsteps and dedicate her life to snot-nosed kids. Instead, she pursued a career on the world's catwalks and eventually transitioned into coaching, opening her own modeling school after the age of 30. Lena's personal life was plagued by discord. Her first husbands failed to meet her grand aspirations, as men's only redeeming quality seemed to be their ability to provide love. However, this alone was not enough to sustain a relationship, and Lena realized this too late. She lost her modeling business and found herself drowning in a sea of debt, with creditors unwilling to accept any of the services she offered to partially repay them. By then, Lena's charm had withered, and as any savvy business person knows, a proper approach is crucial. She was at her wit's end, facing either bankruptcy or worse. One day, as Lena was returning home from a beauty salon, Walking because her car had long been taken away by formidable debt collectors, it was as if a miracle had occurred. She almost reached the dilapidated panel apartment where she still rented a room, but faced the possibility of being evicted any day because of her inability to pay. Suddenly, something unexpected happened. The pretty girl walked through the winter puddles with a heavy heart, regretting that she hadn't stood up to her mother and brothers in the past. If I had, at least I would have a warm place to call home now. But instead, I'll probably end up a filthy, homeless person, she thought. Suddenly, Angelina heard a man's voice behind her. Hey, beautiful, where are you off to? 
How about keeping a tough guy like me company? When she turned around, she saw a heavily overweight man in a dirty and wet jacket covered in a sweater with a huge deer on it. His sagging belly was barely contained by a stretched out leotard. The poor girl was terrified as the area was known for its danger. Lena screamed for help, but no one came to her rescue. As they say, everyone has their own problems. The unfortunate woman prepared herself for the worst, but despite her efforts to fight back, she was overpowered. The bully suddenly released his grip and took a few steps back before stumbling away, falling several times in the mud. Angelina surveyed the scene and noticed an elderly man standing by, silently observing. She found it peculiar that the bully was scared of the old man. However, the man soon explained that he grew up in the area and still frequented the house because his elderly mother resided there. Despite numerous attempts to convince her to move to his mansion, she adamantly refused to leave her tiny apartment. The man also revealed that he knew the bully, Vasca, who was a cowardly drunk that he had punished on several occasions, explaining why the hooligan retreated in his presence. Meeting Pyotr Vladimirovich seemed like a miracle to Lena, especially after seeing the car he arrived in. She pretended to faint, falling into his arms, and thus began their relationship. She manipulated her grandfather into funding their extravagant wedding within six months. However, he remained unaware that she only saw him as a walking wallet. The woman had no affection for him. Her only thoughts were of Petya relinquishing his assets quickly so that she could inherit a substantial amount. However, it seemed like she had a long wait ahead of her, as Petya wasn't showing any signs of leaving this world anytime soon. It had only been a week since their wedding, and as usual, Angelina was still asleep in the morning while Peter was out on business. Suddenly, a knock on the bedroom door interrupted her slumber. Assuming it was the maid, she barked for them to leave. To her surprise, Victor appeared on the threshold and greeted her casually, to which she threw off her quilt without bothering to cover herself. She flaunted her charms, hoping to catch his eye as she had set her sights on him as a much better candidate than his aged father. But unfortunately, her plans didn't materialize as Vidya wasn't as interested as she had hoped. And yet, he had come straight into her cozy marriage bed. With a lazy smile and a stretch, she declared, I knew you would be mine, my little tiger. You resisted me, even though your father is just an old pensioner, while we are young and full of promise. Come to me. Lena pounced on Victor like a wild panther, pushing him onto the bed before he could even blink. Unbeknownst to her, Victor had turned on his phone's camera in an effort to prove to his father that he had made a mistake. However, before he could do so, a cry from the doorway stunned them both. That's enough, now I understand. Purple with rage, Peter Vladimirovich had forgotten some documents at home and had come back to retrieve them. He had wanted to kiss his wife before leaving, only to find her in the bedroom with another man. You go ahead, son. Wait for me in the living room, the businessman commanded before turning his attention to his wife. Taking out a brand belt from his pants, he gave her a harsh blow in the soft spot as a punishment for her infidelity. An hour later, while shivering in the cold and covering her exposed areas, the maid threw the suitcase containing her belongings out of the house because she had reached her limit with the new mistress. Peter, having thrown his wife out of the door, went into the living room to see his son. The son had expected his father to berate him, but instead, Peter firmly shook his hand and thanked him for revealing the true nature of his beloved in the snake that she had hidden in her chest. Daddy, you made a mistake by marrying her. She'll probably try to take half of everything now, said Vidya with a sad tone. Well, that's unlikely. Your father is not that knave. The old man replied with a chuckle, and he was absolutely right. It was only during the trial that Angelina discovered that she had signed a prenuptial agreement that left her with nothing in the event of a divorce, as she had pledged to love her husband selflessly. In her excitement, she assumed that she was signing a document related to the car gift and failed to read it. 
As they were leaving, Peter Vladimirovich addressed his ex-wife, reassuring her that she would eventually find happiness. However, he also disclosed that he had made false promises to a creditor, using her name as collateral. Although he justified his actions by claiming to have learned from her example, his ex-wife was left feeling terrified and regretful, staring at her own reflection in a nearby window. She knew that her future would be uncertain, as the Baron was not one to take such matters lightly. The former model had been too preoccupied with the happiness of others to consider her own, and now she would pay the price. It was a harsh lesson, but perhaps one she needed to learn. In any case, there was no place for such a stepmother in their lives.